Hi guys, so today what we're going to do, we are going to learn how to make our own Choropleth maps. So Choropleth maps, they are fantastic tools for putting statistical data onto maps and seeing patterns, seeing patterns which vary over geographical space. So I've got an example here of our Choropleth map. We've got alcohol consumption per person in different countries around the world. Okay, so first of all, what you notice, we've got lots of different colors ranging from, say, a light yellow all the way through to a dark blue. And as we start moving towards the dark blue, we start to see that more and more alcohol is being consumed. So the countries which are darker tend to drink more alcohol and the worst, the countries which are this light yellow tend to drink the least amount of alcohol. So straight away, patterns emerge. And we can see that Europe, okay, tends to have some of the highest alcohol consumption in the world, okay? So, for example, France, um, Germany, Ireland, they're all drinking between 12 and 14 litres of alcohol per person per year. Um, that's fairly high, okay? Um, and then also we can see another pattern that many of the Muslim countries in the world okay they are drinking relatively small amounts of alcohol as you might expect okay so choropleth maps fantastic for spotting um, geographical patterns what they don't give you is any real um, detail as to the exact number okay i can see here that canada and the united states are exactly the same color I don't know who is drinking more or who is drinking less, okay? I can see here that the United States, when I hover over it, drinks 9.8 liters of alcohol per person per year, whereas that figure is 8.9 in Canada. So they are fairly similar, okay? But with that, well, we don't get that level of detail. These maps are really only for um, noticing patterns across geographical regions, all right? So, what data we're going to use we are going to focus on china this country over here largest population in the world and we're going to look at the different provinces in china now provinces in china are roughly synonymous with our counties in the united kingdom with the exception that they are actually much much larger so for example shandong province down here where my wife is from that has over 100 million people. So that one province on its own has got more people living there than the entire United Kingdom, okay? So these provinces are actually fairly large, both in terms of space and in terms of population. Of course, not every province in China is as populous as Shandong. So we've got down on the left, the different provinces in China, and then down on the right, we've got GDP per capita. So what does that mean? Well, GDP stands for gross domestic product. This is the amount of money that a country or region will earn in one year, okay? So this figure is usually in the hundreds of millions, billions, sometimes even trillions of dollars a year, okay? But what we're looking at is GDP per capita. So this is, we take that large number and we divide it by all of the uh, people that live in that region or live in that country, and we get an average amount of money per person. So we can sometimes use that data and approximate it to salaries. It gives us an idea of how wealthy people are, on a, and we can use that to compare people living in different countries. So we can see that there's a huge range in China. So straight away, I can see that the lowest amount, I, I believe it's the lowest amount, is Jiangsu province, which has got $5,083 per person per year. Okay, that's a very small amount of money. Going all the way up to Macau, which has got $84,000 per year. So that's way more. That's almost twice as much as the UK GDP per person. So a huge range within China. So I'm hoping that we are going to find ourselves some nice geographical patterns emerging as we plot the data. Over here, I've created a uh, 
legend for you so you know what colors you should use of course you can use your own colors but i've gone with starting from the lowest uh, gdp per capita is, is kind of a light blue color going all the way up to red for the highest which are the twenty five thousand dollars plus okay and i've done it in five thousand dollar increments um so that we've got a roughly space now what i've noticed is that many of these um, countries are below 10,000. So I imagine what's going to happen is we're going to have a large area with green and then fewer with these higher, richer countries. But that's fine. OK, that's fine. So how do we do it? Well, first of all, we need to use an online tool. And this is going to a website called mapchart.net. So I'm going to type it in here, mapchart.net. We go to that link. OK, now this website, you can make maps of anywhere you like in the world. But we are going to scroll all the way down. OK, all the way down. We want to get ourselves here, this blank map, China. OK, so it's quite a way down. We'll click on this and it opens up. We have a blank map of China here and we have all the tools we need on the left hand side here right so let's get started okay um first thing i'm probably conscious is that you guys don't know all of your chinese provinces so one thing you can do in this tool if you hover over each province you can see the name okay so that tells you what it is all right so you don't need to know the names of every single chinese province okay I don't know the names of every single Chinese province. I might be able to remember about 80% of them, okay? But I certainly probably wouldn't be able to tell you exactly where they all are, okay? But by hovering over it, we can find what, what color it is and then we can color it in. So let's start off with our most common color. So we go back to here, we see that that's kind of this bluey color. So I'm gonna change this OK, and I'm going to try and approximate uh, a color which is similar to that. I'm going to pick that one there. So it won't be exactly the same, but that doesn't matter. And then I need to select uh, a place. So I'm just going to click on Xinjiang. I'm pretty sure Xinjiang province. Yeah, 7,868. That is definitely less than 9,999. So I'll do that. Xinjiang province is blue. Right. And now I need to give it a label. OK for the key so i'm going to go less than 9999 okay and here i'm going to give my key a title i'm going to call it gdp per capita spell that wrong capita us dollars important you put your units in of chinese provinces we got a key and that will also serve as our map title right so less than nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars let's go so i'm just going to pause this for a while i'm going to go through no i'll tell you what i'll do a few more with you now show you how to do it i don't want to spend the whole time here doing all of them because i'll take forever and this video will be really long but i'll show you how to do it so we've got here tibet autonomous region okay so let's go back here see tibet that is again that's going to be blue as well then we have Qinghai province okay Qinghai province yeah Qinghai province 7100 that needs to be blue okay uh we've got gansu province where well, we know that's the lowest one uh sichuan province come over here sichuan province 8085 so that's blue um, Yunnan province, 6,950, I mean, that blue. Then we've got Guangxi, that is 6,228. We have Guizhou, 6,731. Chongqing, I think Chongqing's higher. Chongqing, yeah, we'll leave Chongqing for now because that's in the next category. Um, Shanxi, 
9,661. So I worked in Shanxi once at a coal tar distillery a long time ago. Um, we've got uh, Ningxia, 7,859. So I realize I'm butchering my the tones here. Inner Mongolia, 9,836. And yep, that's going to be blue. Let's go down from the north. Got Heilongjiang province. Heilongjiang is 5,245. Jilin. 6,302. I've got Liao Ning. Pretty sure that that is also fairly low. Where is it? Liao Ning. Yep. Right. Um, Hebei. Hebei is, yep, 6,719. Shanxi is, that's where Xi'an is. All those terracotta warriors, that is 6,628, so that's going to be there. I got Hunan. Hunan is 8,174. Hubei, I think Hubei is higher. Yep, Hubei is 11,000, so we'll, we'll hang on to that. Hunan, though, I think is low. 8,341, okay. Jiangxi province, 7,700. Okay, what else have we got? Um, right, Beijing, that's going to be high. And I think Tianjin is high. Shandong, Shandong province, I know, is more than 10,000. Jiangsu um, is more than 10,000. Let's look at Anhui. Anhui, 8,479. Now, I'm pretty certain that all the remaining provinces are going to be more. But let's just check a little Hainan province, this little island down here. Yeah, um, Hainan, 8,100. Yeah, so that's going to be low as well. Right, um, so what we need to do now, we know that we're going to have some which are more. So Shandong, for example, is just over... Um, Shandong is just over 10,000. So that's going to need to be a green color. So we need to change our key when we're moving to a different color. So I'm going to select this key here. I'm going to choose this color. Okay. And I'm going to select Shandong province because I know that's uh, just over $10,000. So there I'm getting this green color. Do I like that green or do I want a different one? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with a kind of more primary color green. So what I need to do is put in a new key here. So this is $10,000 to $14,999. Okay, so let's just have a look, see which ones they are. We'll try and do this a little bit quickly. So I've got Chongqing, okay. Uh, I got Guangdong, okay, down in the south. We've got Hubei, so let's do those three. I've got Chongqing, which is here. I've got Guangdong here, and I've got Hubei. All right, let's check are there any others that need to be in this range. Okay, I've got Tianjin. And is there any more? Is there any more? I think that's it. I think it's just Tianjin, which is up here. Right, so let's look now at these ones. Um, Yellow is going to be our next color, taking us up to about $19,999. So I need to put a new, I need a new color. I need a yellow. I want a nice primary yellow so it's nice and bright. And let's have a look who is in this range. Zhejiang province, okay, in southeast China. So Zhejiang is down here. Okay, so that's going to be yellow. What else is going to be yellow? So anything... So I've got Jiangsu and Fujian. So Jiangsu is here, Fujian is here. So this is um, adding the number in here now. So this is going to be fifteen thousand dollars to um, nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Okay, brilliant. So three of our colors in straight away. You can see, I like I was worried about. 
a huge area of one color but that's fine because all these regions are relatively um, poor and we can see as we're starting to move closer to the coast we're starting to get higher um, higher GDPs per capita so we've got a few more to do we've got Hong Kong we've got, and Macau down here we've got Shanghai and we've got Beijing so let's look at those colors so we need uh, an orange color for the next category so let's pick an orange that looks nice and we know that Beijing and Shanghai are both in that categories because if I look here Beijing is $23,000 and Shanghai is just under $23,000 okay so I'm going to go back to this map um, and give this a title this is 20,000 to oh, I've written 29,000 20,000 to 24,999. Okay. Um, then finally, we've got our final categories, the super rich playgrounds of uh, the people down here in Hong Kong and Macau. They are both these city states, basically, but not even very, very small. They're just shown as circles on here because they are absolutely tiny, but they are very, very wealthy. So we need a red color for that. So I'm just going to pick, I'm going to go with that one, okay? So I'm just going to, over here, so in Macau, Hong Kong, and I'm going to add this as $25,000, little plus sign. Let's just check everything. We've got all the different provinces. Yep, we've got our key. All of them are labeled. We've got a title. Brilliant. So that's it. We can here. You can what you can do here is you can preview your map. Okay. You can then right click it. You can save that image as. Okay. So that's downloading that image. Or you can choose here, download the map, and that's going to download it and it's going to give you an, a title. Okay. So you can open that up. Let's pull this across from the other screen. You can open that up and then you have that map. Okay. So what I'd like you to do um, is to email this map to me or to your class teacher whoever's setting the work okay and you have made probably your first chloroplast map and guess what it's super neat super tidy no loads of coloring you know shading to do let's just talk about the patterns that we can see um we can see that oh generally speaking in the west of china and in the north of china the provinces tend to be poorer the richer provinces are along the coast okay they tend to be along the coast um, with the richest around the capital Beijing and then next richest around um, Shanghai, major financial center in China. These regions tend to be heavily involved in manufacturing and exporting of goods. OK, um, Hong Kong and Macau, super wealthy, primarily because they are um, Historically, for example, Hong Kong was part of the of the United Kingdom or the British Empire, and these have a completely different developmental history to the rest of China. So they are very, very wealthy financial centers, or in Macau's case, gambling center of Asia. It's where people go to uh, to do a bit of gambling, have a flutter. Macau is very famous for that. We get here a small uh, anomaly. OK, we can see that Chongqing and Hubei province is this island of green in a, in, a, in a sea of blue. And the reason for that twofold. First, the Yangtze River flows through here. So these areas are linked very well by trade to ports here, especially down here in Shanghai. Another reason is that these areas are renowned for the oil and gas reserves. So there's a lot of industry here because of that so and because there's a lot of industry of course people are, tend to be earning more money but anyway they are that's our core cleft map we got a little bit of information about china what i'd like you to do save that map send it to your teacher and that's it thank you very much guys